if you suffer from varicose veins, spider veins, and other conditions related to vein disease, you are not alone. 40% of women and 20% of men will experience the unsightliness and discomfort of vein disease in their lifetimes. Here today to talk about effective treatment options for vein disease is Dr. James Lundquist, a cardiothoracic surgeon with Baptist Heart and Vascular Institute. Good morning, Dr. Lundquist. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Rachel. You're a lot of fun. I think this is going to be a good segment. Thank I you. I like you already. I feel like we've bonded. Do you feel we like we've bonded? Yes. Okay, good, good, good. We're going to get along quite well. <laughs> well, first things first, and I always like to ask this question of our guest. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and I'm going to try very hard to be slow. Cardiothoracic surgeon. Excellent Tell me job. your story, how you got into that. So I'm a Florida native, born and raised in St. Petersburg, and as the story goes, I always wanted to be a doctor. Finished. Don't we all? But it's amazing you actually got to that point. Apparently, I never <laughs> went through the fireman <laughs> stage. It was straight right. to the doctor <laughs> stage. I did uh, all of my undergrad and medical school training in Florida, uh, finished at the uh, University of South Florida in Tampa. Then I moved to Houston, where I completed all my surgical training. So finished at Texas Heart Institute and MD mm -hmm. Anderson Cancer Center. Then landed in Pensacola 20 years ago. I've uh, enjoyed a very busy cardiothoracic surgery practice at Baptist Hospital ever since. So one of the things that led me into my interest in vein disease, as you may know, one of the most common operations we perform in cardiac surgery is the bypass operation. Mm -hmm. And we use segments of the vein to perform those bypasses, and I became very concerned with the health of the veins. I was seeing some over-treatment, some under-treatment, and particularly for those patients that have risk factors for cardiac disease, I really need to keep those veins healthy right. just in case we need them in the future. Several years ago, I uh, opened up the Baptist Vein Center, and uh, it's been a very gratifying part of my practice ever since. Cool. Well, that's really awesome, and I'm going to be really interested to hear some more about this topic just because, like we were talking earlier, I recently discovered, and I don't know why this was a recent discovery, but how bad it is for you to cross your legs, which is <laughs> A habit for especially women, you know. For many I don't. People. I don't know where where that came from. Why we started to do it, but can I can I cross my ankles? Is that appropriate? I think okay. cross ankles will be just fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell us what causes vein disease. There are several categories of vein disease, and the big two are obstruction, and the second one is reflux. So let me start by talking a little bit about veins, just as a review mm -hmm. from high school biology. So the heart pumps blood to the rest of the body and the arteries, and then the veins carry the blood back to the heart. So obstruction happens usually because of a clot that forms in the veins, uh, and that has a whole separate set of concerns mm -hmm. that we can talk about a little bit later. The second category is what we call reflux, which really is just when the valves in the veins leak. When you say reflux, I immediately think acid reflux. Similar, so um, <laughs> refluxing in the GI right. tract causes right. um, backwards flow of acid from the stomach into the esophagus. Backwards flow in the veins is exactly what you think. Instead of the blood moving in one direction, particularly in the legs, when we stand, we ask the body to move the blood from the toes all the way up to the mm -hmm. heart against gravity. So these one-way valves help. If the valves start to leak, then this big column of blood that's trying to get up to the heart will start to pool in mm -hmm. the legs, and it usually causes one of three problems, either pain, swelling, or varicose veins. Yeah, and varicose veins is kind of a dirty word. People don't, people, yeah. that word just kind of... People do not like no, it. No, they don't, yeah. and understandably, it's kind of a scary word. Don't like the way they feel, <laughs> don't like the way they look. <laughs> no, okay. absolutely not. So what causes blood clots to develop? Blood clots can develop in any of the veins. We have three main vein systems, one deep, one shallow, and one that's right under the skin. So depending on where the blood clot forms, it can be a very serious problem or one that we don't, mm -hmm. that we're not very concerned about. If a blood clot forms in the deep system, it's called a DVT or a deep venous thrombosis. It's very common in hospitalized patients. It's common in patients that have cancer. Pregnancy puts you at increased risk. Um, and being immobile puts mm -hmm. you at increased risk. The problem with vein, with clots in the deep veins is if they break off, they can go to the lung. And for blood clots that are in the deep veins above the knee, there's a 40 to 50% chance mm -hmm. that clot's gonna break off and go to the lung. If it goes to the lung, about 15% of those patients don't survive. Mm -hmm. It can be a very wow. serious problem, completely blocks off the blood flow. Right. So we treat that very aggressively and with blood thinners as the mainstay of treatment. Sometimes we put in filters and other devices. Well, tell us some of the main symptoms of vein disease. The big three are swelling, pain, varicose veins. 
and there are a few nuances. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there will be some staining of the skin mm -hmm. with uh, brownish discoloration or some white dots. Uh, sometimes the pain ends up as restless leg or a heaviness right. sensation or people complain of itching, what we call venous eczema, which is just a, a red leg or a, a inflammation of the leg. Um, and then in the advanced uh, cases, it can cause ulcers, which is a breakdown of the skin. Mm -hmm. Well, so varicose veins are not just a cosmetic issue, is it They're tied not. back to a health issue as well? And I think sometimes our, what comes to mind is they're ugly. <laughs> but beyond that, I mean, it can be something's kind of serious. So it can be both. Sometimes varicose veins have zero symptoms. Sometimes they're extremely symptomatic. Mm -hmm. And so they can cause, you know, all these pain symptoms right. we talked about. They can itch. Um, they can bleed um, because they're very close to the skin, you know, particularly if the skin starts to um, thin as we all right. age. Just a bump against, uh, you know, a chair can, can cause some fairly significant bleeding. Right. So those are all the things that we're concerned about. When we talk about varicose veins, the problem is this valve problem I was alluding to earlier. Mm -hmm. So if these valves start to fail, as you can imagine, particularly when you stand, gravity really starts to work against the veins and all this blood pools in the legs. And then the varicose veins develop to, mm -hmm. to have that um, degree of, uh, or to hold the blood back. So what happens if, you know, you treat, oftentimes we try to ignore these things. We don't want to accept the fact that maybe we're getting older and we're dealing with more and more health issues. Well, what is the consequence of leaving some of these things untreated? So if they're not causing symptoms, we don't worry as much about them. But the things that can happen with vein disease is unfortunately, it never gets better mm -hmm. on its own. It always progresses. And so the things we worry about are blood clots forming in the shallow veins, not as serious as the deep veins we right. talked about earlier, but the, the shallow veins. We can get inflammation of the veins, the bleeding we talked about, and then um, these discoloration problems mm -hmm. in the skin of the leg and progression to a swollen leg. What we really worry about in advanced vein disease is are these ulcers. Because ulcers usually develop around the ankle level. Right. It's a breakdown of the skin, extremely hard to get those to heal. We really like to treat vein disease before it gets to that level. Well, and speaking of treatments, are lasers effective for some of these vein diseases, particularly spider veins? Lasers actually have a very narrow segment in vein disease. We use lasers um, to great effect in other disease mm -hmm. processes. Um, for spider veins, we haven't talked about that yet, but those are, they get their name simply because they look like spider webs. Creepy. Yeah. Um, they work real, lasers work real well for spider veins right. on the face. Um, we don't get very good results with spider veins in the legs, but there is a, a small sub-segment sub called matting, which are tiny little veins mm -hmm. that actually can appear after some of the treatments we've talked about. Lasers are effective in treating that. Great. Well, unfortunately, we are already at the end of our segment. We have to wrap it up. But I've I know had a great time. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that. Um, but we do have your information on the screen, so if somebody wants to get a hold of you, um, they can certainly do that. But we appreciate your time here. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate on the show. being here. So.